Hi everyone, today I want to share my thoughts on Almond by Wong Pyong Sun and translated from Korean by Sandy Joo Sun Lee. I received an advanced reader's copy of this from the American Library Association Midwinter Conference back in Philadelphia in January. Just got around to reading it now and it did already come out in May. The actual cover looks like this, but I read this edition, which I was initially drawn to because of Real Talk at ALA. There aren't that many translated works on display. That is a conference that is meant to advertise big buzzy titles, get ARCs circulating so that librarians and other people in that industry can be reading and promoting these books in their communities and hopefully purchase them for their own systems. Unfortunately, it just isn't feasible for every publisher to showcase every single title, and things that are considered typically sellable are usually written in English and are by white folks. So when I saw a Korean name and learned that this was a translated title um, by a woman from Korea, no less, I was really in intrigued to pick it up because this made the cut in terms of things that the publisher wanted to um, promote at the conference, and I would love to see more representation at the conferences because it is lacking. And uh, I know that Library Entry right now is tackling its own internal white supremacist systems and hopefully will work toward dismantling them in the near future. And this is definitely a discussion that needs to be happening within libraries, but that's just something that I happened to observe. Now that I've been to two ALA Movementer conferences, they do tend to kind of reflect publishing as a whole, which tends to be very straight white and cis. So that's not what this book is about though, but I thought I would get that out of the way. That is really one of the things that drew me to this initially. And the other thing was the back copy, which on the arc just says, this story is in short about a monster meeting another monster. One of the monsters is me. This monster is actually a young boy named Yunjae who has alexthemia, which is a term for a medical condition in which someone is unable to understand, process, or really feel emotions. So that's kind of how he views himself as this lesser person, maybe even lacking humanity because he doesn't have the ability to express feelings or understand when feelings are expressed to him. So you're following him um, going through life, he does experience some pretty severe traumas, and then is forced to grapple with how he doesn't really know how to internalize those things or react to them in a way that makes other people feel comfortable. And there are some really powerful scenes in this novel of his mother and grandmother trying to teach him how to feel and how to respond to feeling if he is unable to feel, to at least make other people understand him and not see him as this um, kind of blank slate person, because there is an inherent fear in not being able to understand what someone else is thinking or feeling. And one of the things that our protagonist cannot understand is fear. He doesn't understand fear, he doesn't feel fear, and this puts him into a lot of dangerous situations. So you're following his relationship to his mother and his grandmother, but also to other people in his community, people at his school, um, and people who work in and around the bookstore that his family owns. To me, it feels very bisected into two halves, um, dealing with family and then dealing with particularly one friend who is a another young man who has sort of the opposite issue as, of young Jay in that he, he feels too much and is therefore unable to contain his feelings just in his body um, and therefore acts out in violent ways because also he doesn't know how to express his emotions or internalize them and therefore he projects in a way that Dunje, by contrast, is very interior. And so you see these two boys kind of foils for each other and you see how their relationship grows. There is a particular scene involving a butterfly that I will not soon forget. If you've read the book, you will know what I'm talking about, but I just loved that contrast. I thought that was really rich for, for self-reflection and thinking about my own reactions to feelings and kind of seeing these two um, extremes. Another thing this book made me really think about was, is the nature of emotion itself, in that we feel feelings and we have these very specific words to describe them, but we don't feel the same things when we use these words. This is exemplified when Yunde's mother is trying to explain to him how to react to certain things, as if there is only one proper way to emotionally respond to a situation. But his grandmother sometimes disagrees with the way that his mother is teaching him emotion because they don't feel like the way to respond is the same, or that the true essence of that feeling isn't being described in the right way. And so I made me really think about the nature of feeling itself and how we do assign words to feelings, but of course we're all not feeling the same things when we think about happiness, or even more specific words about happiness, joy, bliss. And I guess I'd never really thought about how much language can limit emotion and misdefine it, um, and even though we're trying to, to express ourselves 
feeling is really difficult to express to another person. And I just thought that that was really beautifully explored in this novel. And so really for me one of the main themes of this novel is making your own meaning out of things um, and how so much of life is about finding meaning in things that are inherently meaningless. I'm thinking this exemplified really nicely in that his grandmother loves to keep Christmas decorations up and lotus lanterns hanging all year round even though they are seasonally tied to specific holidays, um, but they bring her so much joy that she doesn't really see a purpose in putting, taking them down and putting them back up because she makes her own meanings for them. Um, they mean a specific thing to her that maybe is outside of their normal definition. She prioritizes how she feels about a thing and the meaning that she has ascribed to these objects and how they make her feel. And I really loved that just as like a tiny little thing. And I think this book is full of tiny little things like that. Echoes of emotion and intention and meaning making in life and um, seeing it from the lens of someone who maybe doesn't understand those things, I think made them feel all the more clear to me. Matthew Sharapa also reviewed this book and in that he describes how because of the absence of feeling you almost have to feel everything twofold because you're trying to feel on behalf of the character and fill in this uncomfortable space where you expect emotion to be and you find nothing there. I mean how stark some scenes are because the character isn't reacting and you expect him to. This is very clear in the scene with the butterfly. I felt that so much. It was so tense and so extreme because of the lack of emotion and I think that that is just a really neat tactic that works into the story that I have never really experienced before and really enjoyed. This is a debut novel. It does I think fall into some pitfalls. What you see in debut novels, things kind of coming together in a way that feels almost too perfect, um, too constructed. I definitely felt echoes of that, particularly at the end. Um, you know, perhaps things just tying up a little bit too neatly, but at the same time I teared up at the end because I thought it was really beautiful and I can maybe forgive it for that because it was effective in eliciting an emotion in me and therefore I do think it is an effective ending even if maybe it was a little bit cliche or a little bit unrealistic. Um, I still really liked it for those reasons. I do think there's also a female character who is a schoolmate of the two boys and she is definitely underdeveloped and kind of an afterthought and doesn't really serve much of purpose in the story and that was a little bit of a shame to see but it was a story about really one person but these two boys contrasted so there wasn't a lot of space for her in the novel so I understand why she kind of falls by the wayside but it, it did feel a little bit like she was an object for the story and I didn't love that so much either. So I would highly recommend this book, especially if you're starting to do some pre-planning for your Women in Translation TBRs for August. I think that this would be a great one to consider adding to that list. Um, I'm really excited to see if Wong Kyung Sung has written anything else. I would love to read other things by her because I think that this is a really interesting novel and it doesn't feel like any of the other South Korean novels I've read. Not that I'm an expert, but it, it doesn't feel like Hong Kong and it doesn't feel like Kyung Suk Shin. I think that those three women have extremely distinct voices and I'm very glad to have added this one to, to my own like women in translation canon, which is very small and definitely needs to be expanded. So I'm glad that I found this one and I would love to see more translated fiction talked about on booktube and also at ALA. Not that I have any sway with that giant, um, you know, organizing body of the profession, but I think that would be really great and I'm really glad that I got this one there. So um, please check out Almond if anything in this review sounded interesting to you. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments and other than that, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.